there are a number of different ways to map or chart change. I've got an example here where we're looking at zip codes for an 11 county study area in southeastern North Carolina. In previous examples that I've discussed in class, we had a set of crimes and I used some basic descriptive measures, centrality metrics such as spatial mean, spatial median, um, the um, middle or the, the center feature to measure those changes between 2005 and 2007. Other things that we can do is just calculate the difference between, say, graduation rates or crime rates or whatever here. You can see this data set that I have here. This is zip codes in southeastern North Carolina here. If I open up the attribute table, I've gone through the trouble of calculating the coronary heart disease deaths for each of these. I extracted these data from tabular data that we've discussed before, downloaded from the UNC website. And those are, those are only available at the zip code level. And then I ran a summary and I calculated these. So as you can imagine, you can see the deaths for 2010, 11, 12, 13, and 14 here for this data set. It took a lot of data preparation to do this. What I'm going to do right here is just I'm going to find the change between 2014 and 2013. You can start to see here, you can see we have some really small numbers here. We have 1 and 0 five and three. We start to get into issues with the small number problem here. A lot of times when you look at North Carolina state health data, say infant mortality rates, we have unreliable numbers less than a certain threshold, say five or ten. So a lot of times we want to get a larger sample size. We just can't generate more deaths for 2014 or 2013, but we might be able to combine. You know, let's look at the difference in death rates for combine 2011, 2012 versus 2013, 2014. So we can get a larger sample size and we won't run into this small number problem. But for now, I'm just gonna look at the difference in deaths between 2013 and 2014. What I'm gonna do here is just open up my attribute table, and add a field. I'm just gonna say change in deaths 2014 or 2013 to 2014. I'll just make this a double even though it can be an integer right here. And I'm just going to subtract these values. Okay, So I'm going to do down here, go to field calculator, and basically I'm just going to go down to my fields that represent the deaths for each of these zip codes. So 2014 minus 2013. Okay. You can see these numbers right here by sort descending. I've got 17 all the way down to negative 12. So for these numbers here that are negative, basically it, mean, it means they went down from 2013 to 2014. Obviously these are all going to be integers. Now I can map these too. I look at my quantities. I can map these. If I go look at my histogram, you can see a nice normal distribution right here, and that's going to be an effect of other things too. Okay, but you can see these ones here in red, the number of deaths went up. In green, the number of deaths went down between 2013 and 2014. Now, the one problem with these is that some of these had a lot of deaths to, be deaths to begin with. If I look here at my deaths for 2014, some of these had 68. 57, all the way down to these very smaller ones here. And a lot of times when we run these data, we might not even include these that have five or less deaths or three or less deaths or whatever we define as that minimum number. In this case, it would probably be five because when we look at these changes, we're going to have unreliable numbers here. Now, the one problem is if I see some of these small numbers right here, well, small numbers or big changes might be a result of the fact that we had large number of people that we could have possibly change. So we can look at the percent change here. So the change in deaths in relation to the deaths in 2013. So I can add a new field here. And remember, when we talk about data that need to be standardized versus non-standardized, we look at population change in Mecklenburg County versus some rural county, you expect the population change to be higher in Mecklenburg County because there's more people to possibly change or person uh, to be added to. Same thing with these change in deaths. So I can add a new field that looks at the percent change. 
I can go through, add a field. And I'll just call it percent change. I'm gonna make this a double. And it's just gonna be the change that we already calculated right here, divided by POP 2013. Remember old, or new minus old, divided by old. And then we're gonna multiply the whole thing by 100. So we can create a new column. I can use my field calculator. I don't have to go through and do the trouble of doing the, uh, the subtraction again, but 100 times this change divided by the number of deaths in 2013. Okay? When we do this, we're going to get a look at the percent change. Now, look, what's the problem here? There was a failure during processing. Check the geoprocessing results window for details. Okay? And when I did this field calculator here, that's 2013. If there happened to be a zip code that had zero deaths, what is this quotient going to be? What is anything divided by zero? It's going to be not a number, or it's going to be some sort of over overflow. So some of the ways that we can address this, is I can go back to my deaths 2013. So we're descending, and you do see, I've got three, I've got three zip codes here that happen to have zero deaths. What am I going to have as a percent change for here? I'll probably just put in a zero. Okay. In some cases, I want to, might want to put in some no data or whatever here, okay, because it's unlimited or multiple or you know, infinite amount percent change. Now, how do I calculate the rest of these? Okay, because when I was running these, it ran into the first denominator of zero and ended. So I can do a switch selection. So I'm going to switch selection, recalculate, new field calculator here, you can see this is in zero. So I'm just going to re-put this back in here. And it's only going to calculate the records that are in blue. So you can see down here, I've got 78 out of 82. I've already put in these zeros where the denominator is equal to zero. So we don't run into this problem again. I'm going to recalculate it here. And I can sort ascending. So I've got minus 100, so it went down 100%. And you can see what this looks like here. Okay, where I go from three down to zero here, one down to zero, one down to zero, from five down to one, so an 80% decrease, all the way up to one that has a 300% increase. Okay, and basically what does this look like here? It went from two all the way up to eight. Okay, so Two divided by eight is four. Right? Divided by the three, this is what my three hundred percent increase is going to represent. Okay, it's literally tripled from the two thousand thirteen. Okay? This value is tripled from two thousand thirteen. And I can now I can go and map these values here. Okay, so I can double click on this. And then now I can map my percent change. When I look at my classify here, you can see what I have, you know, a lot of middle values here. You can see a somewhat normal distribution here. You can see this outlier right here. Yeah, and this might be some of this small number problem at work here. So now you can see in red where the coronary heart disease deaths went up between 2013, 2014. And in green, where they went down. Last couple of caveats that I have here. We might want to go out and query all the small numbers here. So I might want to go through and query and create some type of overlay where we don't even give the map reader the opportunity to see some of these values that have five or less deaths. But that's going to be up to you. The other thing that I said we could do is look for change where we use larger sample sizes. And we don't worry, we don't have this 300% increase. Okay, this value of two to eight, this eight just might happen to be a very high year. We're not going to have 300% increases in places that have 50 or more coronary heart disease deaths. They might, they might go up slightly. So we address this small number problem there by getting larger sample sizes or just querying out the values that have less. So in conclusion, this is just one way to map population change. I just did one column minus another, and I standardize it by the prior or the first population and creating a percentage. There's a number of different ways that we can do this, but we always want to make sure we have standard, normalized data. And if not, we need to qualify it in some way, shape, and form.